hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from candice owens and it's titled wow what i learned on the fresh and fit podcast you guys i'm excited for this if i had to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what candice owens has for us in this video all right guys happy friday you made it to the end of another long week i am so excited to share the news with you i conducted my first hoe clinic you guys know this has been my goal in life it's why i work because i want to be able to dedicate time wow. to exploring the hoe dumb bringing these ladies in transforming their <laughs> lives i want to move away from the era of the booty cheeks on instagram well i did it i sat down with some hoes and i changed their lives and i want to say no one believed in me but you guys did and now i kind of feel like i'm ready to retire All right, guys, here is what happened. So I was invited for a long time, actually. I just could not make time for it onto a podcast known as Fresh and Fit. There, it's conducted by two guys. Actually, there's more guys, but Fresh and Fit refers to the two main podcasters. Uh, Fresh, his real name, by the way, is Walter Weeks. And Fit is Myron Gaines. They wanted me to come on the podcast, and some people said, don't do it. It's a waste of your time. Essentially, they were the podcast that inspired the whatever podcast, mm. very similar format. They invite a bunch of girls right. on that work in the sex industry, and they speak to them. And a lot of people find this not to be a great thing to do, but actually, I think it is a good thing to do mm. because what ends up being the result, I think, is that you have a lot of young women that are watching the podcast and they can decide from them themselves whether or not they think working in the sex industry in any capacity is a good idea. Yeah. And there, this was, let me just be clear, a house filled with hoes. They <laughs> even have like the waiting room. And because there's so many strippers that come on the show, you got, they like, they strip on a pole while they're waiting. I wasn't in the room, but their waiting area is very much designed for their activities is what I will say. Wow. I went on the podcast first to just sit down with the guys and talk about my ideas and what I believe in politics. And then they have this part called After Hours and they invite all of the girls to sit around and they're able to talk to me and he allows me, Myron basically says, goes around, asks each of them how old they are, what their career is, and uh, uh, basically if they have any questions for me and I'm able to then ask them a bunch of questions. Mm. So this was unique. I thought to myself, this really is what I want to do in life. Like <laughs> I want to be a person that's sitting in a circle wow. with a bunch of women who are hoes and give them advice. Yeah. I do. This is actually perfect. That's why I ignore everybody telling me I have to go on the show. And I went and I tried out my clinic. I really did. That's what I did. And the first thing that I found was this pattern as I was asking them questions and talking about their lives. Anytime they would say something, it was very much, I don't care about men or I don't care about dating because one of the things that Myron does is ask them if they're in a relationship and the overwhelming majority of them are not in a relationship or if they are in one, it's a very new relationship. So we don't know if it's going to be successful, but we have an idea. And I was very struck by the fact that well, not really struck. It makes sense. The majority of these girls, all of them actually did not grow up with a father in the home. Wow. It's of course makes sense why they don't like men and why they mm. have turned to these sorts of careers. Yeah. There was one girl that really stood out to me and her name was Kayla and she shared her story and her story was very sad. Take a listen. You mean like hookup culture? Right. Yeah. Like hooking up with a younger, lot of guys. Like when Tinder first came out, mm -hmm. I think I was like 16 years old trying to find a boyfriend. Uh, On Tinder? Yeah, I, I grew up in a very small town in Michigan. What happened, so. what happened to high school? <sighs> I Like I said, I grew up in a very small town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and did you think like having sex with them would bring you a relationship sort of a thing? I just thought that's culture? like what you did like yeah. if you wanted to be in a relationship with somebody. I don't think that's... Uh, you're, when you're 16, your brain's not developed and I think a lot of young women right. think that when they're young and so I, I totally get that, especially with culture telling you all the time that it's right. like do this do this and maybe he'll want you when did you have a how old were you when you had a child um i had her when i was 20 okay so quite young yeah and was that a long-term relationship leading up to it or um so i met him when i was a stripper so he met me at the strip club wow. when i was like just getting off drugs and mm -hmm. uh so i was like looking for a way out i didn't i was staying in like a drug house and mm -hmm. everything yeah what drugs um, what drug were you addicted to cocaine okay Ooh. um 
so and he was a pimp i like found out after like he took me out to eat or whatever that he was a pimp mm. so um i stuck with him for a couple weeks like staying in a hotel and then like i got put on probation so like he was still the only person like paying for my phone bill and stuff like that so i just stuck with him and then like later on he just told me like he loved me and he wanted me to be his girlfriend so i was just like okay and this is when i was 19 so. yeah so you were very young did yeah. you grow up with a dad in your house um my dad died when i was 11. okay that's very interesting yeah. this is sad thanks for sharing way. that yeah no it's i mean there's there's a very clear pipeline that happens and i, I think it's actually really great that you're sharing it because yeah. you know the worst thing is when people pretend this is like an amazing lifestyle wow you guys i love it when candace owens goes on this kind of show because she doesn't hesitate to give the best advice to these young women and i feel the reason why most of these young women turned out the way they are is really because of the absence of father in their lives let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below and let's continue watching you guys well, it's right. like i had every no. option available and I to me i don't condone like girls doing only mm -hmm. fans or anything. like i do it but like i just do you it feel, because it, allow it, it, and it also allows me to be like a full-time i am a single mom mm -hmm. um no child support no benefits yeah. nothing like that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and like it allowed me to stop prostituting because like obviously i was yeah. like a prostitute so hmm. I'm, I'm really grateful that you shared that that's i think it takes a lot to talk about that like no no for sure and, and this like this is why i like to come on like shows and stuff to spread like what i've been through i also want to be clear that kayla shared that she had been sober um, from drinking and abusing any drugs for three years, which I thought was amazing. And I really encouraged her in that direction because she needs to hear that she's she's doing well. She is doing well. She's taking steps to make her life better, at least. And she very much understands that she is leaning on OnlyFans, not because she thinks it's the right decision. It's not the right decision. Of course, it's not a good decision to sell your body, but because she has no other economic means. And this is why I really enjoyed these women, as opposed to the women that I sat down with on the Whatever podcast, who were approaching the topic as if it was a no-brainer, that it was all about money. They're making tons of money. These guys are idiots. And they didn't understand that while I very much completely know what it must feel like to, to be to be broke all the time, especially in today's economy, it sucked when I was broke growing up, that they're in the fast lane, but the fast lane ends very quickly, which is to say that everything seems amazing and fast and like so much money when you're young. But then what happens, of course, is they're going to get older. And then what you're going to have is younger OnlyFans model that are making more money. And of course, men are not going to want to date women that have that sort of a resume, which is the point that Fresh and Fit make to these young ladies. Like, why would any guy want to date you? They're very harsh in the way that they in the way that they say that. But it's something that I think that the young women don't think about when they're trying to emulate and be someone like a Kim Kardashian or a Kylie Jenner is they think that they can just stop that sort of a career path whenever they want. And every other man is going to be available to them where that's just not true. Of course, that simply isn't true. One thing that I was able to share with them, and this particular clip went viral, and so I want to share it again so that everyone can hear it in case they don't watch the Fresh and Fit podcast, was just a story from my childhood because I very much identify with young women how easy it can seem when you're presented with the option of fast money and you have your youth and you have your beauty, so why not? This is a 100% true story. Me and a person who was my best friend, one of my best friends in high school, were back from college. I think it was just the first semester. We decided to go out in New York City and we landed at a bar and it was just a total chance thing. But an artist named Wyclef Jean was performing. You might be familiar with him. And it's really interesting because she was a very innocent girl, very sweet. He offered us an opportunity to go on a couple of tour stops with him and we went and she changed. She changed instantly on this tour stop. It was, it was very obvious that she was suggesting to him that he could sleep with her, despite the fact, and I will stand by this, that he did not put any pressure on either of us to do that whatsoever. And it changed her life. That moment changed her life. She ended up dropping out of the school that she was in and sort of pursuing this 
if you want to call it, limelight, mm. this sort of quick money. The following year I visited her, she had moved to Miami. She was living in a massive apartment. It was two bedroom, two bathrooms. I mean, what were we, 20 years old? And I was so broke. I remember visiting her on that spring break. I was so broke. Now she's not in school. She's got every rapper that is texting her. She's hanging out with them. She's dating some of them. She's sleeping with tons of them. And I just remember leaving her in Miami, didn't recognize who my friend was, and calling another friend of mine named Devin, and I remember crying because I could not even afford to put gas in my car. Like I was just, I remember saying to him, Devin, this is so unfair. It's so unfair. If I just did what she did, I could have so much. She lives in a huge place. You know, people are taking care of her bills. She doesn't even work. You know, she says she's modeling. It's just so unfair. She's in doing music videos, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll never forget what Devin said to me. He said, Candice, if you think in 10 years your life is going to be worse than hers, you are out of your mind. Wow, you guys, I love that advice that David gave to Candice Owens. Because 10 years after that incident, Candice Owens has become a very relevant person. She has put in the work and I bet that almost everyone knows about her, but no one knows about her friend. And I don't know how relevant that her friend still is. Let me know what you guys think about this video so far. And let's wrap this video up, you guys. You're out of your mind. If you think 10 years down the line, the decisions that she is making is going to lead to a healthy and a good life, you are out of your mind. Years later, I must have been 25 years old. I was working in private equity and no joke, the person that ran the firm had a massive wedding and he invited Wyclef Jean to perform. And I hadn't seen him since I was 19, 20 years old, chose a different life for myself. And here I was working on this massive wedding. I'll never forget after he came and took the meeting with the execs, he and I took an elevator downstairs together and he looked at me and he said, you know, I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you and what you did in your life. And I knew what he meant. I knew that he meant that he was proud of me because I didn't sell myself to artists, even when I had the opportunity to. And then beyond that, fast forward to, I don't know, was I about 30 years old? It was a couple of years after that. I can't remember the timeline, but I was working with Charlie Kirk at Turning Point USA. And I am not kidding. This is a true story. You can ask Charlie Kirk. We walked into the Four Seasons in Los Angeles and working at the front desk was my former friend uh, who had all of the money in the world in Miami when she was 20 or 21. And suddenly, you know, here she was as a hostess at the Four Seasons, not where she began, not the life that she was living. And, you know, I wish her all the love in the world and all the luck in the world. But I know that eventually what Devin had said was going to happen is indeed what happened. She got older, not as interesting to those rappers. She chose the fast life, but it didn't get her anywhere in the long run. You know, it was fast, quick, and then it was over. And so I shared that story with them and you could really see how much it was resonating with them and how much maybe they were thinking about changing their lives because it's never too late to change their lives. And in the end, yeah. that was the advice that I left them with when they were able to write in questions to me. So it works like this. They write their questions on a paper and they sort of pull them out of a hat. So I don't know who is asking the question, but I can answer it. And I will let you guys watch that moment here. Do you believe someone can truly change once they find God or religion, even if they have a promiscuous yeah, past? Alexis. Yes, I actually was thinking about that. Can you remind me of your name? Enola Blaze. Enola? Enola Blaze. My real name is Kayla. Kayla. Yes. So I was thinking about that with Kayla um, because I had a former porn star on my show and you should definitely watch that episode and she ch transformed her life. She has kids, she's married and she just came to her faith and it was a really interesting conversation to talk about, you know, the industry, same thing, drug addiction, everything. And then she just gave up her life to God and, um, you know, w met somebody at church who just wanted to know more about her. She was very open about, you know, her life and where she came from and now she has like three kids you know Damn. she's been married to him for years and what brought them together was was faith and i think that it is such a strong tenet and people turn away from it so much but um what god can do in your life when you give up your life to god i've seen it happen if you want to see a miracle turn to faith wow and i want that for you by the way thank you yeah you're the i'm gonna pray for you kayla thank you she was so happy. The girls were so happy. It ended on such a wonderful, beautiful note. And I really do want to encourage people to watch that episode. I, I want young women especially to watch that episode and to know that just because you're going 
through a period of grief, which we all go through, and just because you're frustrated maybe by your finances and, of course, the, the glamour and the gloss of social media letting you know all the times that it could be so much easier, even if you sold your soul to the devil, you don't have to do that. You really do not have to do that. There is another option, and that option is hard work. And by the way, if you already have, if you already are selling yourself, at any moment you can stop and you could turn to something else, something that is much more fulfilling. So I appreciate being able to sit down with these young ladies. They learned from me, but I want to say also, I very much learned from them. And that's all I have to say about that. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting one from Candice Owens. One thing that differentiates the girls on this podcast from that of the whatever podcast is that the girls that are on whatever podcast are very, very defensive, not willing to change. But these girls on the fresh and fit, they're willing to listen, they're willing to change. And above all, they are very, very pleasant. And let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section down below. I really had fun reacting to Candice. I really had fun reacting to Candice Owens. Candice Owens is truly, truly made for this. And wow, you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.